Welcome to the Automotive Diagnostic Podcast. We're going to explore ways to sharpen our diagnostic skills, find learning resources, and hear from experts in the automotive field. This podcast is brought to you by Jarhead Diagnostics. Jarhead Diagnostics manufactures in-house diagnostic equipment and storage solutions, as well as distributes for companies like Pico, ATS, and Topdon. One of my favorite tools that I have bought from Brandon and Jarhead Diag is the case for the U-Scope. If you don't have a U-Scope, you probably should, but if you have one, you got to get one of these 3D printed cases, has a magnet on it, has a full-size BNC lead that you can connect to, and it gets rid of the weak point of that scope, which is the mini BNC connection, which is pretty fragile. This case makes this thing nice and secure and makes it an even better tool than it was. So check out jarheaddiag.com. The link is in the show notes. Hey, for listeners of the show, if you want a discount on Jarhead Diagnostic products, use discount code DIAGPODCAST. That's D-I-A-G-P-O-D-C-A-S-T, DIAGPODCAST, for 10% off purchases from jarheaddiag.com. I am happy to have Automotive Seminars as a sponsor for the show. Now, if you're not familiar, Automotive Seminars is a diagnostic technician training company. They've got a website that there'll be a link to in the show notes. And what they offer is top-notch training to technicians like us in the field. I've been taking their training courses for years and have got a ton of benefit out of it. They've got top-notch instructors, John Thornton, Scott Shotton, Scott Manna. And every other month, they've got a two-night course that you can sign up for. Join in ask questions, and afterwards, you've paid for the course, you can access a recorded version whenever you want. You can re-watch the class two years later in case you wanted some details on it, and that is a fantastic feature. So make sure to check out the website to see what courses they have available and what's coming up in the future. Hey, what's going on, automotive world? Welcome to another episode of the Automotive Diagnostic Podcast. My name is Sean Tipping, and I'll be your host once again for today's episode. Thank you so much for joining me. On the show today, I've got Don Smazel and Kyle Buell joining me again. We are doing this just about every six months, uh, getting together. Uh, started last year, last summer, and we first talked, and all three of us were just getting our businesses off the ground around that time. We talked about six months later, kind of caught up uh, to see where everybody was at and how everything was going, and we're doing it again today. And I got to say, it's really cool uh, to just kind of check in and see all the progress improvements and challenges that everybody has as they're growing. Uh, well, I mean, even turning a sole proprietorship into a business and what that looks like and how it takes shape and the hurdles that you encounter, but then also the successes that you have. Um, and these are two very intelligent, successful guys uh, that are doing some really cool things with their businesses. So it's inspiring for me uh, to see what they're doing. And I've you know mentioned it in the show, they've encouraged me to make certain moves within my business. And so uh, that's why I think it's pretty cool to share on the show. And we'll keep going with this, you know, every roughly six months or so we'll check in and kind of see where everybody's at and how we're doing. So anyways, great chat with these guys as always. I know you'll enjoy it. So with that out of the way, we'll jump right in. I think that was probably one of the last Fast and Furiouses that I actually saw. Actually, no, I don't know what number it was, but I I was single at the time and I went to... I went on a date with this chick 
to one of the Fast and Furious movies. That was just what we decided to do. And I, it was one where they were like chasing a airplane down a runway or something goddamn stupid like that. And I don't know. I'm not a big fan of those movies. Like the first one was cool. Maybe the first two. I don't know. But she loved it so much. She was like on the edge of her seat. And she was squealing and so excited and stuff. And uh, I, <laughs> after after the fact, I decided I'm like, I don't think we can uh, continue this <laughs> any further. I think that that was my determining factor. I'm like, yeah, I'm not really that into you. <laughs> Fast and Furious deal breakers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tokyo Drift. Tokyo Drift is my favorite. The third one? Yeah. Yeah, that's the I third think one. That's the third one. Yeah. I don't I think that's the last one I saw, truthfully. What are they on to now? Like twenty six or something? Something like that. <laughs> Toretto's a grandpa. Ten or eleven of them and there's spin offs and Yeah, I don't know. Oh goodness. Maybe it's one of those things like you know so much about how cars actually work and how stuff actually goes <laughs> you can't get into it. <laughs> it's like, okay guys. They fly like thirty feet in the air and then they slam on the ground and it's like, Okay, cool, your wheel bearings are still intact. That's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's very believable. The realism here does not apply. Like the James Bond cars, I could understand. That was cool. You know, little machine guns popping out of the headlights. Sure. Yeah. Sure. You know, like the ejecto seat. I mean, that was in Fast and Furious. I forgot about that. Oh, back in the day, the, the James Bond stuff, the cars, that was that was the coolest. I remember it was one of the 90s ones with Pierce Brosnan. He like pulled out like. I don't know, this little cell phone thing. And he was driving the car around with a remote and stuff. And that's that's not that far fetched nowadays, but that was so cool back then. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> the one, the one, uh, James Bond with the Aston Martin, or I guess there were many odd Aston Martins, the DB9 or the Vantage or whatever. Uh huh. The one where they do like the barrel roll off the ice. Yeah, that was my favorite. <laughs> I was like, I want to do that on my bike. <laughs> oh, I knew nothing about cars then. Yeah, yeah. I had, uh, I had no cool, no clue besides I thought they were cool. That was it. Yeah, it's like we drive one of these every day, but what they do in the movies is mm -hmm. astonishing. Well, what's uh, what's new, guys? What's going on since uh, I I looked the last time we talked was February, so it's been a little over six months, but we're keeping the trend going here go ahead Kyle. Kyle Fast and Furious 3 <laughs> Dean <Wow>. K3 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I hope someone it'd be really cool if someone can make like a like a photoshop thumbnail sure. put our faces <laughs> into the, <laughs> the Fast and Furious <laughs> uh, well so as far as updates um, things uh Got real busy. I bought a big van. I bought okay. a sprinter. Not a new sprinter, but a used, used new to me sprinter. And uh, yeah, just doing, I'm doing a lot more, um, I guess, working on the business, not in the business, or at least I'm trying to. Um, you know, hiring an advisor, a lawyer, accountant, a bookkeeper. Just okay. getting all my ducks ducks in a row, if you will. That's probably the uh, the newest thing for me. It, it's still just you out on the road doing the the job. Still just me. Point? Yeah, okay. I'm planning on uh, hiring. Hopefully in the spring. I'm hoping okay. to get through the year. Uh, you know, because I've I've picked up. I've got a good pace. Um, can handle like without getting burnt out i think i know what i can handle so as long as i can maintain that and then keep the relationships happy keep the workload under control and uh still maintain a home life then i will make it to the end of the year and then the, the biggest hurdle i think i'll run into is every shop i go to they say they're looking for techs body techs detailers it doesn't matter so and most of my friends who I joined the trade with are no longer in the trade. 
So I don't, I don't know anyone specific who I can like say, Hey, you want to jump on board? You want to do something different? So the, uh, I'm presented with the unique challenge of hiring someone who might be very fresh to the industry or mm-hmm. the complete opposite. Who's been in the industry knows a thing or two and well, what about area are you in? And the only reason I ask is because there's a bunch of people that listen to the show and maybe somebody is around where you're at. That's true. I didn't think of that. Uh, Eastern Ontario and Ottawa. Okay. Uh, basically, service area is Ottawa and the greater cities, like extending from, if you're from Ottawa or familiar with Eastern Ontario, uh, like Canada Bells Corners to Orleans is like the span we got one highway through the city and it's about with no traffic, a 25 minute drive end to end. Okay. So yeah, I just did a, I did a ride along with a guy uh, a couple of weeks ago who reached out from the podcast was local. It was like, Hey, you know, this is something I might think about in the future and I'm not ready to add a, a third van at the moment, but <laughs> maybe eventually. So um, yeah, so there's, there's a lot of ears. Uh, that are tuned in so maybe somebody will be out there that'd be pretty cool but... that would be wicked <laughs> I, I, what, yeah I didn't even think of that jumping into this is pretty cool hey what's keeping you from uh, getting the third van Sean is it just equipment workload or what's the deal yeah I got a secure enough workload like this summer I was definitely there uh, but we I, I'm sure it's the same relatively everywhere but back to school and uh at this time of year, it usually drops off a little bit from the summer volume. So right. I want to see where that's at. I want to see September, October until the snow flies kind of where it levels off at and then say, OK, what would it take to add a, a third person uh, to what we're doing right now? And then, yeah, then I got to get the van. I got to get the equipment. And that takes a little bit of, of doing uh, to oh, get yeah. all that stuff figured yeah. out. But I, I foresee it in the future. I honestly do. Um, I think uh, I think that's the direction it's headed. There's, uh, I still have done very little marketing. Um, I, I did actually yeah. hire an uh, administrative guy uh, recently. So he's nice. doing phones for me. He's doing scheduling, dispatch, ordering parts, and kind of customer relations in general. He's got a sales background, not a technical background, which I'm okay with. I'm helping him out with that. But he's got... The, the sales background is, you know, he's good at schmoozing. <laughs> and so, um, I, um, my, my goal actually is to kind of target some body shops and get some more of that business. And that I think once I get, uh, more of that work, then, then I'll have, you know, that room for that third person. So it's in the future. Is the emergency uh, guy uh, local? Yeah, he is. Um, and he can do pretty much all of it remote, uh, which is nice for him. But he can also go wherever he wants to do it. He can come hang out with me, which I had him do for the first couple of weeks because I had to introduce him to shops and say, hey, this is Mike. This is who you're going to get on the phone now instead of Sean. <laughs> if it's a super technical question, he'll he'll three way me in or whatever. But you know, here's the guy that is going to handle the scheduling and everything and, and kind of showing him what we do too. Right. Cause he's, he doesn't have a technical background. So I had to like, this is a module program. This is a diagnostic. This is a key job. This is an ADOS. <laughs> Here, here's the shops that handle stuff really well. Here's the shop that really <laughs> like to screw around, you know, that sort of thing, uh, showing him the ropes, but, um, he's, he's handling it really well. And I, I can't express how nice it is to have the um the volume of phone calls <laughs> not coming into me all the time always that it's, has been so great yeah dude that was when i had my wife join no, I hear you. and she took over and like actually got the you know the hang and the rhythm uh man it was nice to just like look at my phone and I'm just like, Oh wow. There's no missed calls. There's no text messages. There's, there's no, I don't have to stress. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like over here. I'll do diag. Sure. And I'll get to, all right. Do, do, do. I mean, before yeah. you'd be in the middle of a diag and you know, shops are blowing up your phone and well, uh, you just lose your oh, train yeah. of thought and just, uh, it's just annoying. Don, you were uh, actually one of the 
inspirations to making that move is because last time we talked, you told me about how, you know, you, you brought your wife on for that position and you were, and we've talked since on how much of a relief that's been for you. And that, that was a big part of why I was like, okay, I'm going to make this decision. Cause it's tough because he's not out there programming stuff, dying and stuff, making money like my other guy. And so the salary that you pay that person, it, it, it feels a little different, but I mean, again, I'm only three, four weeks into this and I'm already like, this was a fantastic decision <laughs> and I will, no. I will pay to have my, my sanity and my free time back a little bit. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't be surprised if you do lose a couple of accounts. Uh, sure. we did for sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, just because, you know, they specifically want to talk to Sean, yep. you know, that's just what's going to be. Uh, yep. we had that, we had that issue at the beginning, uh, where they wouldn't want to talk to my wife. And then, so she'd be like, okay, well, let me see if I can get a hold of them. And I'd be like, yeah, sure. Let me talk to them. And they would literally ask me like, oh, well, when can you come? I'm like, Gee, you fucking <laughs> kidding me, man. Like that's the whole reason why she's here to answer the phone is to not answer these goddamn questions. Yeah. So, uh, of course. And then I would show up to the shops and they'd be like, you know, they kind of got little attitudes. They got a little attitude with me. They're like, hey, you know, we need your direct number. We need to talk to you directly. And I'm like, look, brother, like I'm working just like you guys, man. I'm busy just like you guys. If you guys can't respect that, man, then sorry, man. It is what it is. This is how it is from here on out. So yep. you just got to put your foot down. But yep. don't be That's surprised if they stop calling, though. Uh, and yeah, I wouldn't, I would not be surprised. I, I'm thinking of a couple of shops right now, but a couple of them, I asked them, I was like, you're not going to have your technicians answering the phone. And I mean, if you do, then uh, you're not running the shop very well, but it's the same thing. Like I am the technician. When I come out there, you don't want me answering five phone calls while I'm trying to figure out your problem. But that's what I was doing. Like, I, I sat in this car uh, a couple of uh, going a month back like 45 minutes and i hadn't done anything on the car i just was doing phone calls and getting people back and ordering stuff and this and that i'm like i haven't even i'm sitting in this nissan Sentra. i haven't done anything on it though <laughs> like this is such a waste of time but yeah um the the help is huge and it's it is nice so it, we got three people now and we we've had a couple of meetings like we had lunch on Friday all got together and I was like wow this feels like a team now like it's <laughs> you know it was just me originally obviously you guys know the solo gig and then I added a second guy Steve and you know we'd meet up time to time and talk and stuff but now that we got three people like there's just like a little different energy to it and yep. I I felt that on Friday when we had lunch together, I was like, this, this is a cool feeling to have an actual <laughs> start of a, of a team and hopefully it gets bigger, but I'm, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. That's, uh, ironically, since you say that, uh, since the last time we spoke, uh, well, we got a shop and also with that shop, uh, we hired somebody also, uh, he's been on three weeks now. He just finished three weeks. Um, strong technical background in Diag, at least, uh, very little experience with programming, um, no ADOS experience, but that's fine. Okay. Uh, but in the, he's been in the industry, I'm going to say 12 years, 13 years, somewhere in there. So, uh, of course, ASC master advanced level, right? He's got his L1, L2. Um, so he, you know, he can wrench and obviously he's seen plenty, knows, you know, knows the ins and outs of a lot of the common issues and stuff like that. So uh, the biggest thing is obviously his attitude. His attitude and his headspace is right. So uh, definitely adding him onto the team was a big plus and a huge help for me because now it's like those Ford ABS modules and steering racks and Nissan TCMs are like you know, sure. the quick, the easy jobs. Uh, but, you know, obviously the drive time and the time to do those jobs, obviously I'm able to unload them onto him. Yeah. Um, Originally, man, I was shooting for 90 days to train him <laughs> right along with me. Uh, but here lately, we've just been so freaking busy. I've just been sending him on his own, and we've just been kind of going, <laughs> crashing and burning along the way. But we're, we're making it work. Uh, nice. Obviously, learning a whole lot. How did you find this guy? Uh, actually, we were. he was following me on Instagram, and uh, he reached out to me. And they needed a module program at the shop he was at. So then, yeah, I show up, do, you know, program, and then obviously multiple visits. 
Uh, then of course, you know, him and I started talking and, uh, he had mentioned that, you know, he was tired of the monotonous day in and day out kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, obviously we started talking and then I started to get to know him. And like I said, the biggest thing was his mentality. Once I figured out his mentality, like, you know, he he's got a good head on his shoulders. I was like, okay, hey, this guy is somebody that, um, you know, we'll invest in and we'll, we'll grow him and, you know, bring him on part of the team and, and yeah, so far everything's been working great. That's awesome. Uh, so the, the brick and mortar place you got, what, what is the setup? What, what do you got? So it, we just have a shop space. It's a little over 1750 square feet. Um, it's got a little office in there and then we strictly keep it to mostly ADOS. I do take some, <laughs> some hero cars. I'll have them brought over there. Um, just depends really what it is and the shop, you know, if it's one of my better shops, then, you know, we take it in or what have you. Mm -hmm. Um, and then of course we do, obviously we work with body shops. So a lot of the, uh, wire harness repairs and stuff like that, stuff that's going to take some time. I just have it taken over to the shop and just, we just do it there. And it's just so much nice. It's just so much, it's just nice to have everything. I mean, obviously I got my shop equipment and we got the, the mobile equipment, so yeah. You have stuff in the shop, but just conveniently there, and then you're in your own environment, and you don't gotta worry about. Worry that's about the a time key schedule. right there. Is like it's yep. your space, and the pressure, the feeling, the vibe is a little different when it's it's your place. And there are certain problems where I could totally understand why that would be a fantastic thing to have. Yeah, if I want to, you know, stay there. Let's say if I want to get a late start on the day, and if I start at noon and I work till whatever, nine, 10 o'clock at night, if I want to, or, you know, mm-hmm. if I go on on the weekend, you know, if I'm there at one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, I mean, nobody tells me anything. It's my place, you know? So. Right. Yeah. You don't have to f- make sure that someone's going to be there to open up the shop at a certain time or whatever. Yeah. And then they, yep. don't, yeah, and then they don't show up after you've, <laughs> you know, made your commitment and changed your schedule around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've been tossing around that idea of, uh, of a brick and mortar place and, it's obviously depending on how you do it, it's a decent amount of money to, to rent or buy or whatever you do. And I just, I'm not quite there. The ADOS thing, I guess is the one part that would kind of pull me towards it. All right. Cause I've had a couple of the round few calibrations with the mats where I just had to tell the shop, sorry, you guys don't have the physical space. Oh, well, I can set up a thing in the parking lot. It's real level. And like, no, dude, it doesn't work that way. And so having a space for that, I guess, would be a, something that that would draw me towards it. But I just, uh, I don't know if that's the move for me right now, the direction I want to go, you know? Yeah, that was also, I wanted to get the space first because in my personal opinion, I didn't want, if I was going to hire somebody... I didn't want him to come to my house sure. because, you know, and then leave. It's just, it's not professional, right? Like if I'm trying to yeah. build a business. It's like, I'm going to be professional as I can. Right. Um, so that was another reason. Uh, a huge part was obviously get the shop, get the guy, and then we can keep growing from there. Um, mm-hmm. But a lot of it was because of exactly what you said is ADOS and space. Um, I mean, shops don't understand. They just don't get right. it. And then you have a few that do, you know, but the ones that probably do, probably do their own already um mm-hmm. so there's that but that's what it's funny you mentioned that up here in, in canada uh there aren't a whole lot of uh shops who are getting into ados or at least not yet over in this side yeah you're doing a bunch of that aren't you kyle yeah uh there are a few shops here in my uh region who are picking it up um Mainly specifically ADOS, not so much programming and um, diagnostics will always just remain, Mm -hmm. you know, for uh, a big part of the market. But yeah, it's um, it's definitely uh, it's something I've thought about getting a shop or hiring someone first. Which one to do first? Do them both at the same time. Um, The commercial side, at least getting commercial space up here is not very difficult it's just then location and then if you want to remain you want to keep the same convenience that you're offering as a mobile tech 
Um, you have to hire at least two people, run cars back and forth, you know. Sure. Convenience, convenience and availability are definitely like the two top priority of a lot of shops that I've encountered. When I asked them directly too, it's like, hey, is there, you know, some feedback as to what I can do, what I could change? How can I make this better for you? Basically, they're just like, be there when we need you. Yeah, that's basically what it comes down to. Like what Kyle just mentioned about shuttling cars, that's probably not, I'm not going to say the biggest hurdle we have, but that's definitely something that I wish I had somebody dedicated just for that. Mm. Um, Because like currently right now, like my wife will do it. So not only does she obviously handle the phones and then the ordering parts and the same thing, the dispatching, but uh, when we coordinate some stuff, uh, most of the shops we deal with, they're pretty good. Some of them actually will just take care of it all. They'll bring it to us and drop it off and pick it up. You nice. don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. Uh, then obviously there's those instances where it's like, obviously they don't have the people available or what have you. And so there we are trying to figure out, okay, Hey, go pick up this car. Hey, they close at five. Like we need to go now. Like hurry up. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. a lot of extra time. Yeah. 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 Like windshield time times two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've had it where I've been at one of the body shops and then they'd be like, Hey, Oh my God, this is pressing. You know, that we need it done. We need it out by the end of the day. And it's like, one o'clock. <laughs> like okay, dude, just know like I'm charging you additional. And they're like, yeah, whatever, whatever. We just need one, it. It's like, okay. So there, one I, o'clock. there I am throwing all my eight off stuff in my van. Like an example, I had a Subaru eyesight and they didn't have the space. I didn't have the board with me either. So there I am like, okay, I'm loading all my ADOS stuff into the Subaru to go drive it back to my shop to unload it, do the calibration, load it. But I left everything behind then and I just took the car back. But uh, I got there at 1 and then obviously by the time I got done, drove back, it, it was 4.30, they closed at 5 and we like barely made it. And, but that's, that's something. Last day of the month. Yeah. We're delivering this car at 5. Yeah. <laughs> you to talk to you when you go drive it. You're like, come on, guys. No, <laughs> now we're screwed. Now we're screwed. Yeah, like. but you could take it through drive-through or drive drive-through car wash or whatever. Say, so, yeah, we cleaned the door. <laughs> so the the Subaru Eyesight. Um, it's funny you mentioned that. I have one that I've been fighting at a shop. We're going back tomorrow, actually. They 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 what? said they have it ready for me. Um, so I got the target and everything and I got error on this thing, no matter what I did. And I tried it in a gazillion different like lightings and different positions and different backdrops and whatever. And I couldn't get this thing to go. It kept saying contrast error, contrast failure. When I went to do the alignment, we even tried a different camera. Um, well, they had aftermarket glass in this thing. And so that's about to ask, that was yeah. literally the only thing that I could find. And I, I, this was also reaching out to some people that do ADOS and they told me to check for that. And so they poured it OE and gla- OE glass in it. I'm going back tomorrow morning to try this again. So I will let you know how it goes, but is there anything else Please that do. I should be looking for <laughs> to get this stupid Subaru cross track? It's a 19 cross track to pass the calibration. How high are the ceilings in this shop? Pretty high. It's a big place. Okay, so they have like separate lights, yeah, even evenly spaced apart, kind of thing, like not creating any weird shadows. Um, I guess I'd have to take a look. I don't know that right off the top of my head. Yeah, it. I haven't had an issue with lighting as long as, um, like, there's a light shining, like, just hypothetically toward the car and toward the, okay, uh, the board. Gotcha. In those scenarios, like the light facing directly into the camera is what would cause the issue. Mm, I gotcha. See, and I'm But if it's if it's high enough evenly distributed, it's usually fine. Okay. See, and I'm the exact opposite. That's why I got my space. Because I'd go to these places and try to do a calibration and fail, 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 error, fail, whatever. And it was because of lighting. Lighting, lighting, lighting. Mm-hmm. Mm. I did I did an eyesight on Thursday morning and I've got a one of the new mono mono camera uh eyesight, if you want to call it an eyesight. The single camera in the center okay. on a twenty three Sol- Solterra. The new targets. Okay. No issues with that. I've yet to go to it, it'll be on Wednesday. Oh, oh gotcha. Okay. 
So I will, I'll keep you informed. All right. Well, I'll let you guys know what happens tomorrow morning too. So, or I'll be calling for help, but <laughs> you could, you could post, uh, I don't know if you're in the ADOS Facebook groups where there's like, I got a hundred percent. Oh, it's Photoshopped. <laughs> Oh. Somebody was saying you could see with the camera on your phone the distortion in the aftermarket glass, and I looked, but I didn't. It looked fine. I could see the target through it. Interesting. So, I don't know. I actually recently just had an issue with a uh, twenty-one Ford Mach-E. Now, Ford being a dynamic calibration, um, everything was correct, like fuel alignment, tire pressure weather outside was great it would pass the calibration with fdrs uh, but then it says in the after it passed it says successfully calibration successful please make sure like the front camera fault or malfunction message on the cluster disappears and it never would kept throwing the fault c1001 78 for alignment incorrect etc cetera, etc cetera. so i checked the pitch angle Pitch angle was, uh, I think, zero degrees the first time I did it, and then it changed to point two the second time I did it. Um, and then I just looked through the weeds a little bit, went through TSBs, everything was up to date and everything. And part of the pre-inspection, I noticed it was an aftermarket glass. So, I mean, you have to, before you rule out the glass, you just show up and say, like, hey, I'm not doing it because it's aftermarket. They want obviously proof and whatnot so that they can go back and adjust it however they need to. Mm -hmm. And yeah, ended up being glass, even though it passed the calibration, they would never clear the light. Weird. It was a bit odd. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's a tough one. And obviously <laughs> I'm letting my shops know as much as possible, you know, because of that, like, Hey, make sure you're doing OE glass, but of course you're going to run into this. Uh, um, Going to Before places, you, they're gonna just try to save like a buck wherever they availability. Can. Yeah, yeah. Like there was, so I reached out to a local glass guy I usually do with, and he said, "Yeah, there's a Ford OEM glass out of our supplier in the East End." Um, and the shop called the dealer, and they're like, "Yeah, glass is a week away." So there was one local. It's just, I guess, different glass guys use different suppliers or whatever. They didn't realize there was one in in town. Mm. So as I, I let them know, like, well, let me know when you get it sorted because I can only do the button pressing and <laughs> driving. <laughs> uh, I can't do the glass. Right. Yeah. You guys uh, ever dealt with any lightning strike vehicles before? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, I imagine, yeah. Don, you probably see a few of them, huh? Yeah, well, uh, before, I, before I went mobile, actually, when I was at Toyota, I had one. Uh, it was a forerunner, an eighteen forerunner. I actually have the video. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot it in our group, and uh, okay, you can check it out. But you can literally see the lightning hit the roof rack of the forerunner, and um, the lightning comes out out of the tire. <laughs> what? Yeah, and that's that's, wild. that's actually where I learned, or not where I learned. That's actually when I started getting deep into scoping because I started obviously sc scoping communication networks. Okay. Uh, and that's what really took me into network diag with the scope. Uh, I, I first it was it was pretty evident. There you go, it should be there. Oh yeah, this video. Oh, you so, have the video of it actually hitting the vehicle. Yeah, yeah we got no it from kidding. the customer. Oh damn! Woo. So that's from his home cam, right? <laughs> so, yeah, of course it comes in, and of course, I mean, typical dealership, right? Yeah, they, the first time that you know somebody reads, oh, struck by lightning, like, oh, I don't want it, I don't want it. And I was like, mm. so of course, dispatcher walks by, he's like, hey, I know you like electric going to challenge, here you go. And I'm reading oh, it, and I'm like, Ooh. I was like, we're about to make some Damn. money on this. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that's wild. You know, I got with the service advisor, and I was like, hey, man, I was like, uh, that's what we're gonna do. I was like, because if I write up a list of modules, they'll total this thing out. So we're going to start with, uh, we need seven hours of Diag, and we need two modules. And then we did those two, did Diag, got another list of like four or five modules. Like, here you go, insurance. They're like, okay, go for it. 
And then we just kept doing that. Next thing you know, 30 something hours of, of Diag and R&R &R and modules. Uh, got it all up and running. I needed two door speakers in the rear and I needed, I think it was the AC amplifier. So it was the two door speakers in the rear and the AC amplifier, and they totaled it out after that. <laughs> I was like, God damn it. I was like, I'm right here, man. Like, come on. Like, I'm about to clear this thing, like, through and through. And like, nothing to the customer didn't really want it anymore. So he was telling the insurance company. So the insurance company was already like, all right, fuck it. We're just going to total it. But uh, they dropped like it does happen. 27K into it, and then they decided up. Oh, that, that's, that's it we're totaling it out that's wild yeah I was, anything up here that would be struck by lightning just probably instant right off oh. yeah I, i'd say like i just i've never seen one i've never heard of one like in locally i i just went through it on a traverse i had an episode about it but um it was ecm underhood fuse box fuel pump control module body control module and that was all we could find. I mean, we didn't go through everything, but that was an, that was what it needed to get it running, um, which we got through all that stuff. And we did. We got it running. And then it had t it had timing codes in it too, which it's, it's well. a, it was a traverse of the three six. So yeah. that was a lightning. Yeah. Well, so that's that's what the shop they tried arguing with me about it. They're like, well, isn't this caused by the lightning? The lightning strike too? I'm like, I. I Dude, it's a correlation. Did you check code. the oil, bro. <laughs> right. right. He's like, well, we're gonna put in uh, cam and crank sensors and and solenoids. I'm like, go for it, oh, but you're still gosh. gonna have a correlation code. Like maybe one of those solenoids is stuck. I don't know, but you're probably still gonna have a correlation code. And they did. And then he calls me back, and he's like, well, is there anything else the lightning could have done? Because I think they were trying to get it through on insurance. Um, and I'm like. I was like, no, like those timing chains were screwed long before <laughs> the lightning came along. Like, that's just the way that stuff works. And, um, yeah. So, but anyways, that was an interesting one to deal with. Cause we, we had no idea that that's what happened. And which just like module after module after module, like, this is very strange that all okay. of these things would have failed at one time, but yeah, that's definitely one of those that you get that gut feeling. You're like, mm, I don't know, man. Like, is this something wrong with this car? Like, I yeah. just, there's no way. There's no yeah. way. I, I can't explain something it. to be said. Yeah. Something to be said about trusting your gut. Right. Especially if you hit a brick wall, mm -hmm. you're looking at like three different directions. You know, and yeah. You do actually, enough of this stuff. You, you can feel when something isn't right. You're just like, I, Hmm. actually just did that last week on a 14 Explorer. Uh, we were called in for a no crank, no start. Actually, no, pa it wouldn't even power on. The dash won't power on. Get there, scan it. It's a smart key system. Uh, get there, scan it. BCM has an ignition switch code B1310 something another. Uh, we troubleshoot it. Okay, cool. Uh, we're not getting any ex run accessory relay c control. So I bi-directionally control it and I can hear the BCM click. And that relay is actually integrated into the BCM. So I could hear it click when I bi-directionally control it, but the dash, nothing comes on. I'm like, hmm, very interesting. So uh, we jumped the run start relay while bi-directionally controlling the run accessory. Nothing. Uh, so based on that code and the troubleshooting, troubleshooting tree, I ended up calling a BCM. Of course, I checked powers, grounds, comms, all that was there. Um, I had even went looked in the RFA. I'm I'm seeing the ignition switch input come in, come into the module, and I'm like, okay, well, I mean, that ignition switch input should say something to the RFA and to the BCM. Somebody should wake up the bus, right? Mm -hmm. Which would be the BCM in that case. Um, and no, uh, nothing happened from the BCM. So they get to use BCM. I show up, program it, and now that code is gone. Still won't ignition on. But now the RFA is throwing a uh, PATS identifier because the BCM was replaced. So you do a parameter reset, same shit. Nothing mm -hmm. changes. So I'm like thinking, okay, is this RFA bad? Uh, you're able to program keys to it. You can erase keys. I updated it. I mean, <laughs> everything, I, I, don't, I didn't know what else to do, what to do at that point, truthfully. Uh, I told the shop, I said, hey, man, look, uh, this potentially looks like an RFA. I said, I, don't, I said, there's nothing really I could check to test. I mean, everything is here. I don't understand. 
Uh, and then I said, you know what? Uh, better yet. I just said, hey, man, I'm going to have to bow out of this one. This is just because it was one of those gut feelings. I was there and I was like, man, this is this is just, this isn't right, man. There's something wrong with this thing. Yeah, that I'm going to get suckered into and be married to this thing. Uh, so I told him, I say, man, I don't have time for this right now. You know, if you guys can wait, then cool. But if not, man, I'm going to have to bow out. Uh, and I said, don't even worry about the, the diag fee, man. I'm just going to eat it. Uh, we'll just call it a loss on both ends. And I was like, man, just kind of move that to the mm-hmm. side because I got to mm-hmm. keep business moving. <laughs> uh, and that's obviously just coming from being screwed enough to when you learn, like, no, no, we're not going to do this. Time. Say no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You've let, you've let a car eat your day enough times where yep. it's like, okay, uh, I, I got to sacrifice my pride a little bit here and make a business call on some of these things. And I, I'm really bad at that, but I'm trying to get better at at making those calls. It's just saying, sorry, this is not something I want to get involved with. I, I even told the shop too. I was like, Hey man, I'll buy that BCM off of you. I said, I know you guys paid for it. Um, it was 60 bucks and they were like, no, that's fine. They're like, we're just going to chunk it on the shelf. I was like, okay, cool. Whatever. (laughs) Yep. I recently came across, it's not a identical situation, but one that actually like I had enough time allotted for it and any time moving forward, uh, I'm just waiting for approval at this point, but, um, to make it quick, it's a 15 caravan, uh, flex fuel. And prior to me showing up, the shop had, what do they do? They did. I think an injector for an open injector circuit code months prior, they changed the spark plugs and I think they changed valve cover gaskets. Um, and, uh, while they did the valve cover gaskets, I think they changed both camshafts on bank one and all the rockers. Okay. I should explain the issue. The issue was they were chasing a misfire when the car originally came in cylinder five and then, uh, Months prior, had a cylinder one injector code, so they replaced the injector. Months later, cylinder five misfire. Find all this stuff. And they never really got down to the bottom of the cylinder five misfire. But in the midst of all this, it started throwing a P0171 and 172 for fuel system bank one and two rich. Okay. So, apart from... So, you know what they did? They did... A couple injectors, spark plugs, an ignition coil and valve cover gaskets, camshaft and rockers on bank one, the head on the back. So at this point, um, they, uh, they called me in to, they wanted, they asked first if I had a, a tr- pressure transducer to go in cylinder. I was like, yeah, sure. I mean, they, they told me that they were chasing a misfire cylinder five. So I went in cylinder five compared to cylinder one. Compared to bank two, everything looked normal. Uh, I even stuck a boroscope down the hole just to look at the valve seats and the valve face just to make sure they weren't like kind of corroded or mm-hmm. weird looking. They, they weren't 100%. Um, he told me he did a leak down in a compression test and leak down showed, I think, 15 to 20% leakage on bank one compared to bank two. Okay. So I was like, mm, you know, kind of looking at something weird valve seats on those you know they're not the greatest anyways long story short uh it's still uh pegged rich it's minus 30 trims all the time no matter what you do they've replaced oh yeah so once it started doing that they replaced the pcm they replaced the map sensor they circuit tested everything from the map sensor to the pcm Mm. um they did a, I, a fuel sample test, a bunch of other things. I showed up. I did the basics. I did fuel sample, uh, forced it rich, forced it, forced it lean. Doesn't change. You as soon as it goes into open loop, so you rev it and you let off the throttle. It goes into open loop real quick. It trims go to zero, obviously, and it runs mildly better. And then they just plummet again. Okay. So I went further, and I just they had another ECM. Uh, that they had already replaced. I just made sure it was up to date. Uh, no change. You can do a fuel composition reset, drive it. It's always, 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 always super rich. Okay. 
So uh, I'm waiting for approval to see if the owner of the vehicle wants to do anything more because they've had it, I think, over a year. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, and they've they put the customer, they put the owner of the vehicle in a loaner. Uh, and they haven't, I don't think they've paid for anything as of yet. So I spent like a couple hours in it, got my basic data. Um, I went even as far as like manually changing the resistance in the map sensor reading to pull it. Cause it was, uh, I wanted to pull it down. Sure. Right. Yeah. I was like, I'm forcing this thing one yeah. way or another and didn't do a thing. It just threw a barometric pressure sensor, low code. <laughs> and I was like, what the heck? So the interesting things that I found that I mentioned to them was that the barometric pressure reading in KPA is 300 KPA. And for our region, we should be about 100 KPA. Okay. Right? And no matter what I did, I could not get that down. Without it setting a code. I, without it setting a code. And I tried, I looked at YTech, I looked at Autel, Snap-on, just to see if, like, is the PID being misinterpreted as, like, uh, HPA or mercury, inches of mercury, yada, yada, yeah. just to see if the value was inconsistent. So anyways, that's, uh, it's, it's one of the cars I haven't solved that I may never get to solve, but like, luckily they allotted me the time uh -huh. and like any, any time moving forward, you know, I'm just waiting for approval. Sure. Sure. Yeah. But like, I, uh, at this point, my, th I think my next test is, um, so, okay. The way it works, barometric pressure sensor is the map sensor. The barometric pressure is, uh, calculated as soon as you like crank the vehicle or ignition on, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you ignition on, it reads the resistance value and the signal wire from the map sensor uh -huh. to determine atmospheric pressure okay right before the engine before the engine's cranking really uh -huh. so i and the map sensor reading is reading perfectly it passes the map sensor test as per fca data it's constantly rich and i i you know i blocked off every port on the the intake mm -hmm. you know Check the oil. The oil looked fine. They change. I recommend them. Like you guys should change it. It smells like gas. <laughs> First of all, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's the thing. It, it's running yeah, lean. Driving. Like as it's pulling fuel away, is the engine actually running lean? Is it misfiring and stuff like that? Like, is it? Oh, it smells rich. Like, oh, it so it actually almost burns your eyes. So it actually is running really, rich. really rich. Okay, okay. Like stupid rich. Wow. <laughs> Huh. I know it's like I, I, I'm I'm just amazed at the amount of parts, like it's all the parts, all of them that are responsible for fuel control, even the oxygen sensors. Huh? And it's still super rich. I've got. What do you do at that point? <laughs> yeah, when you run out of parts, I, I've got a Volkswagen at a shop. Um, not a exact same problem but a similar situation where they've been through this thing don has one too so I, many got rid, I, got, I got rid of it today it's gone <laughs> oh you did it's gone <laughs> did you fix it <laughs> no the, they have to put another uh pcv valve in it it's a uh, it's 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 so we had it there at idle and i'm scoping this map sensor because of course data live data was all wonky so it'll idle fine Sometimes. Uh, so obviously the concern was it was a surging idle, then it would miss and stall, and then it would just stall out. So then you start back up, run like poop, stall out again. Okay, cool. So they call us, we get there, we uh, we smoke it, we smoke the crankcase. That was the first thing we did. We smoke the crankcase, valve covers, pew and smoke. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, guys, this is unmuted air. Like, we can't have this. Like, you need to fix this. So anyways... They put a new valve cover gasket on. They're like, hey, it's doing the same thing. We show up again. We smoke it again just to make sure. Yeah, okay. It, it's The leak's gone. Uh, and we have an O2 code for... I, f I forget the exact code, but it was an O2 code. Um, and it's stuck low, pretty much. So, you start looking at map. 
Um, and yeah, sometimes it runs great and you can drive it, drive. I mean, they shop drove it for four days and then it started messing, messing up again. So then when they call us back out, uh, we're looking at it and of course it's running beautifully. There's no, nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, so we start checking some things and, uh, it's a two five, uh, Jetta, right? So, uh, we check the intake bolts and I mean, I kid you not, man, probably four out of the six finger tight i can loosen them with my hand <laughs> so all right cool we tied them down we're thinking all right cool for sure that's it i mean that, that's yeah. it we're good uh <laughs> we tighten it up we're like hey man we're good da, 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 da. we drive it make sure okay cool shop keeps it they drive it for a few days all right cool everything's hunky dory they call a customer hey come pick it up they pick it up customer takes off comes back two days later same thing i'm like what the hell man so we start looking at map map uh Ped data, ped data, obviously. And, uh, yeah, it, it gets wonky and then dies. I'm like, hmm. So we scope it. And uh, sure as shit, man, you see the signal. And at, at idle, no input change. Nothing nothing changed with the car. Like, there's no one in it, no AC. No, nothing should be changing. And they, you see signals start fluctuating. So we pull it off. Of course, it has oil. Okay, cool. So pull off the throttle body. We look in the intake. Yeah, there's a valley of oil in there I'm like okay this is great i'm thinking well maybe this is just residual so we clean it clean the map sensor put it back on runs like shit i'm like no we're gonna get a map sensor so we go get a bosch slap it in uh, we do the tsb update at idles idles fine idles fine we drive it it's fine <laughs> and then uh it starts acting up again. I'm like, man, I guarantee you there's going to be oil in this freaking intake. So we just open the butterfly valve, open the throttle body up, and yep, there's oil in there. And I'm like, all right, they're going to replace they're going to replace the valve cover again. Supposedly, that's like the third one they've put on. So I'm like, okay. hey, guys, look. I'm like, either one of two things. You guys are putting low-quality parts in on this thing, or this guy has, you know, he has excessive pressure. He has crankcase pressure, uh, which I know he doesn't because I checked with the vacuum gauge, and it's good. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm like, okay, this is just quality, quality of parts. But of course, you know, the shop's like, oh, we've replaced that. There's no way it's that. And I'm like, well, it's that. <laughs> like, I yeah. don't know what to tell you, partner. I mean, it is what it is. So yeah, we just, we just took it back to them today, uh, to put a valve cover on it. So we'll see. They're just going to, they're going to get one from Volkswagen and we'll see what happens. Hmm. So that, that reminds me real quick. I'll add one more thing to my caravan story. Uh, the only unique thing about it is I stuck a pulse sensor in the exhaust and the overlap between bank one, bank two is like, I wouldn't say significantly. It's fairly different. Like there's an obvious difference in pressure change. Now I didn't put uh, the pulse sensor in the intake just to see if there was an issue with like an overlap or valve sealing, but, but if I'm seeing it in the exhaust, I could probably see it in the intake. Sure. So. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if uh, if excessive uh, overlap, you know, putting hydrocarbons back into the intake would create such a weird rich condition, but uh, it's a little far fetched because it runs fine. Technically, like you can just step on it and it revs up. It doesn't like bog. It doesn't pop. Okay. It doesn't do anything. It's just always rich. Uh, it's, got, it's got plenty of fuel, lots of power. <laughs> She's got lots of fuel. That's for sure. Damn. Yeah. The Volkswagen at this shop, at the first time they called me out, it was for timing codes. And this is an old Passat with a 2.7, like a 2002 or three or something, an old one. No, um, the actual V6, uh, it was in like the Audis and stuff. And the one where you needed a special bar to line up the cams, they had two holes in them and the bar went across the front of the engine. I actually had the tool uh, cause I used to do these back in the day when I was a tech. And so I know the motor and everything and I look at it and the data pids show it's out of time. The compression, relative compression shows it's out of time. The misfires show it's out of time. I'm like, yeah, this thing's out of time. Okay, simple. And there, and I told them, I was like, you guys need a special tool to line up the cams. Otherwise, good luck. Um, and uh, I, I borrowed it to them, actually, because it just sits in my toolbox in my garage. I, I have no desire to do Audi timing 
uh, you know, like I have no desire for that. So here, yeah, I'll borrow the tool for X amount of dollars and you guys can use it. Um, so they do it. They get it all back together, blah, blah, blah. And they call me back out. So the light on, come back out and it's timing codes again. Data pids are showing it's out of time again. All everything, same tests. It's up. I'm like, sorry guys, you must have did this wrong. Like something, something screwed up. <laughs> did you look at the chains under the valve covers and all that stuff? Uh, yeah, yeah, we looked at that. Oh, it's one of those. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah so the the cam, Old the Volkswagen. cam that's run off of the belt. Just for everybody listening who doesn't know, the cam is run off by the belt. That is the uh, exhaust cam, and then. It has a chain underneath the valve cover from the exhaust cam to the intake cam. And between there, there's a there's a adjuster that will change timing with oil pressure. Right. So like, well, we're going to go back into it. We're going to go over it again. And they're like, OK, we changed the adjuster this time because we think it was messed up and we read the timing. And it was the same thing again. And so I come back out there. I'm like, hey, it's still out of time, guys. And I, I'm looking at this from a scan tool testing perspective, right? Like I haven't had it apart physically. So I'm like, guys, you got it. Like, are you reading the process? Blah, blah, blah. And they're, you know, they're an OK shop, but, you know, this sort of thing just isn't their specialty. And so you know, I'm questioning whether they're doing it right, obviously, because it's still out of time. And um so then they they called me out while they had it apart and and I'm charging to go out there and they're okay with this cuz they want to get this car fixed but they they're like we have it all apart can you just come tell us for sure that this is in time before we put it back together cuz our tech's tired of taking this apart okay cool <laughs> so I go out there and I line up the chain marks and I line up everything it's all there I'm like yep Yep, this looks good. This looks like everything I, I can see is in time and whatever. And they put it all back together and same thing. It's all out of time. <laughs> and, you know, so I'm really going over my stuff now. I'm like, is there something up with the tensioner or something that I'm missing? Is there something else that I'm I'm missing and I can't find everything? Everything's pointing me back to this thing is out of time. And um, so I'm like, hey, guys, I don't know. I, I need to spend some more time with this, like maybe even taking it apart and looking at stuff, but I don't have the time for it. So this is just going into you guys' story. Like uh, I ran out of things to do on this car besides taking it apart myself. And I don't know, maybe there's a wrong camshaft or something weird with this car, but everything we could find, the thing was in time, but it's still out of time. Um, and yeah, it's waiting. They want me to dig back into it, but I'm like, this is on my way back burner. Like, I don't have time to take apart a 2003 Passat. Like, it's just not part of my my daily thing to do. And I don't know if I'll ever get to it, but it's out of time. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you hear it in the RC test? Yeah, yeah. Like, it sounds like it's skipping fast. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, the, the three are lower than yeah. the other. And I was like, am I on the wrong bank? And I checked that and I wasn't. And, um, yeah. So I find it, I find it fun. The questions you ask yourself when you're in the middle of something. Yeah. Like, uh, what did they do? What did they am I do? Am I doing this right? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Sometimes when it's too easy, like I'll, I'll test something and I'm like, oh, that's it. I'm like, nah, that was too easy. I did this wrong. Let me, let me yeah. check that. Mm, something's wrong here. <laughs> yeah. Let me go back I mean, and load this ground. About, uh, leaving them from behind, right? Putting them on the back burner. Lately, That's tough. for me, it seems, or I should say us, because it's no longer just me, but us, it seems like we have quite a few of those. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I have a 17 F350 with some rodent damage inside that... Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah I got yeah, a like high-speed bus one. I can't communicate anything on it, uh, but I scoped, I scoped the splice pack, and I can see everybody. I, it gets to the gateway, uh, my terminating backbone's at 60 ohms, uh, but it just, I can't talk to it. They put a new gateway in it, same shit. And uh, I can't talk to the gateway to program it. So I'm like, what the fuck, man? Like, why can't, the hell's going on with this junk? Um, and I mean, when I say that there's some rodent damage, like, it's it's pretty bad. Like, there's rodent droppings, like, under the carpet. Like, I got there. They're like, hey, we need you to program this BCM. And I was there for something else. And I'm like, okay, cool. They're like, I'm like, which truck or what car or what? And they're like, yeah, it's an F-350 over there in the corner. So I walk up to it, dude. The whole front's taken <laughs> apart. Like, the whole interior's taken apart. Like, I can see the metal floor. The center console's gone. The seats are gone. The bottom parts of the dash are ripped off. And I'm looking at them. 
And the guy's like, look, man, I'm going to pay you regardless whether it works or not. He's like, just give it a shot. And I was like, okay, bro. He knows. That's cool. Yeah, I was like, okay, bro, cool, whatever. So <laughs> connect, whatever, scan. I get a pre-scan, and I'm like, man, that's like, I'm looking at this thing. And you know IDS, so it tells you fail, 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 or not there, or whatever the, whatever the case may be. And I'm looking at the list, and I'm like, optional. Yeah, it says optional, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like... I'm looking and I'm like, man, I know this thing has ABS. Like, it has to have freaking ABS. And ABS is under optional. And I'm like, what the hell? So then, yeah, man, I'm, I'm going through all the lists. I'm like, dude, I'm like, you got like nine modules that are like offline. I'm like, uh, I don't know. I don't think this is going to work. So, of course, IDS, I can't program the BCM. So I use Forescan. Uh, able to talk to it. Able to do as built. So I load the as built. Okay, cool. Uh, try to do the parameter reset. I can get in. Uh, we try to do the handshake and that doesn't work. It, it times out, errors out. Um, so I'm like, hmm. So here I am like looking at can lines. I was like, oh, well, I'm just going to jump it from the BCM to the PCM, get the parameter reset to work, and then it should start. Done. <laughs> okay. Uh, that, was, that was high. That was really high, high hopes I had there. And of course, that was three months ago. <laughs> no, then, I, then I would get like suckered into it, right? Because I'm like, well, now I want to know, right? That curiosity yeah, in me. Yeah. So here I, here yeah. I was with just a U scope, and here I am pulling out the Pico, and I got all this crap out. And next thing you know, I'm three hours into this thing, and I have a bunch of data, but no direction. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. And that's when I learned, well, I didn't learn my lesson then. I went back on a Saturday. I was like, hey, guys, I'll come back on the weekend because I got sucked <laughs> into it. I wanted to know. I was like, I need to figure this out, dude. Like, yep. I'm right here. Man, I hate that drive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm right here. Freaking And a. I was there on the Saturday and I'm, you know, at this point, I'm like literally going by module by module on high speed one. I'm like, okay, you, are you talking? Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> you, are you talking? Cool. Yes. We're getting to this splice pack. Okay, cool. We're getting here. But, 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 but. Like, I'm going down the network. And then I told, I asked myself, I'm like, Don, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like, it's, <laughs> it is Saturday. You now yeah. have six hours into this thing because you're here three hours. You were three hours the day before or a couple days before. And then I realized, I'm like, this is not a smart business move. What do you, why are you, why are you doing this hero stuff, man? Like, get the hell out. So, yeah, I walked in. I told the shop, I said, hey, man. My saving grace is I just did a quick visual, right? So I popped the uh, driver side, no, passenger side, uh, side of the dash off, right? The little panel there. And I'm yeah. peeking in. I'm just, just looking in to see if I could just hopefully see something obvious, right? And I could see the, the top of the glove box from the back side. You could see all the rodent fingerprints, right? Okay. And I'm like, hmm, I can see some wires that are like kind of just, it just looks, it doesn't look normal, right? Just something looks weird. So I pull the tweeter from the top off and I find some wires chewed. I'm like, guys, you got to pull the dash. I was like, we don't even know. I'm like, I don't even know what's back there. I was like, we just need to pull it. There's wires that are chewed. There's evidence. Like we just need to pull this fucking thing apart and let's just see because yep. I have no idea. Uh, so I tell them, they're like, okay, cool. Yeah, we'll pull it. Da, da, da. I go back two weeks later. I'm like, I walk through the shop. I don't see it there. I'm like, hey, where's the Ford? And the tech's like, oh, man, fuck that Ford. I pushed it outside. It's sitting out there. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I was tired of seeing that in my other bay. And I was like, hey, I don't, I don't blame you, man. So I don't know what they're going to do with it. Uh, I don't even know if they pulled it isn't down it, or not. Isn't it just wild how broken cars can get? Yeah. Well, in like the simplest scenario, like that Ford truck, he said the owner of the vehicle was just driving down the road, and then a couple things happened. See, and what now it's a bucket. Yeah, and, <laughs> and some other back, like, very important pieces of information I didn't mention was so they use me and they use another guy to, to do this programming. Um, and they caught us when we were on vacation, I think. So they called the other dude out, uh, and they had put a PCM in it originally. Mm -hmm. So. That guy came out, couldn't do the parameter reset, and that's how they said, hey, well, you must have a broken wire from the PCM to the BCM. So that's why the whole interior got dismantled. So mm. they have this remand PCM from I don't know where. Uh, they don't have the original, of course. So oh, yeah. now we it's have cool. yeah. So now we have a new module into this network, this new PCM, and now we got this new BCM and a new gateway. So now we're trying to figure out, okay, hey, well, is it, do, do you guys induce a problem here? Like, I mean, you know, all those questions start coming into play and it's like, nothing makes yeah. sense. 
And then when I told him, I said, I was just like, hey, guys, I just, I can't. I don't have time, dude. I don't have time for any of this, especially now that, you know, we got a, I got Mark on board and we're trying to get him trained up and, you know, get him up and running efficiently and properly. Yeah. That's the thing is like, how many profitable jobs are you missing out on while you're (laughs) down in the trenches with a. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, That's a a rodent bug. infested network core. issues. Yeah, yep. There was so I don't mean to bring this up, Don. Bring up a scar. There was I had an, an F one hundred and fifty like two weeks after that. Same sort of issue, and <laughs> uh, I I think one I think it was a medium speed bus was down. I'm scoping it. Same routine. Everything's good. I'm like, no way. I'm getting st- stuck in stuck into this again or with like what Don did. Anyways, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna unplug the gateway. I unplugged the gateway and then the vehicle started without the gateway module. <laughs> Explain that. I I don't know. That's kinda weird. Anyways, I plugged it back in and everything works, so <laughs> Yeah, I unplugged my gateway. Freaking networks go open, nobody talks to each other, dash doesn't even turn on. I'm like some bullshit. I know, and then their their concern was just the blind spot light. After that, like the the dash was dark and it would start, so they that's what they were concerned about. Okay, and then the blind spot because they replaced the tail light. Oh. But in all honesty, in those scenarios, I I actually ask myself, what would Bernie Thompson do? You'd get the A <laughs> like, channel out. <laughs> I know, right? Ben, like. I want, I can't remember how long ago I watched one of his videos. It was like they degaussed the crankshaft yeah. because of like a magnet. I was like, I think I need some of that on this caravan. <laughs> <laughs> Something ain't right. <laughs> it's just like take his wild approach, his logical approach, if you will, throw it into your daily mix, but it's just so difficult to. It, it- to make it, it is. make business sense. Well, in, in 99% of the time, that like crazy wild outside of the box stuff isn't needed and doesn't apply. It's a just regular, normal broken wire or open or whatever. Like that's that's just about everything. So you don't have to go crazy and get out the degausser. But OK, there's a couple cars out there that are um, just complete oddballs and yeah like you say like some of these cars yeah. can really really get broken i i think in 10 to 15 years a lot of the cars that are out there right now newer are going to be broken and it's going to be real tough for the majority of people to sort through these problems because i i don't know absolutely I don't think any of this stuff's getting any easier and the problems are more unique and more complex than than ever before mm-hmm. as far as what i'm seeing on newer vehicles eight, eight. Oh yeah, eight channel gateways in vehicles, and then you explain to someone, yeah, you got four high speed bus networks, <laughs> and it's just like what? <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, like yeah, that's how the car runs. Yeah. yeah, like we still get calls. We still have a lot of older GMs down here, obviously, because you know we're in the south. So, uh, I mean. Guys struggle to diagnose class two networks. So yeah, yeah. it's I like had a Cadillac with a radio pulling it down the other day. Like, yes. and it's like <laughs> oh, guys, like you're like, I had a 22 grand wagon ear, uh, with a network issue and it was on the BH bus. We had, uh, two, well, we had 120 ohms. So we had an open, uh, and long story short, it was in the driver's seat module. Uh, I got it nailed in in about a couple hours. It took me a couple hours. First off was obviously getting acclimated with the vehicle. I'm like, okay, where are the freak? Or where's this module? Where's that module? You know, obviously, so I'm in front of the computer for a solid 35 minutes looking at where's this module? Yep. Okay, this module's here. Connector view this. Getting all the ammo together. And then the actual testing was just quick. Um, yeah, but we got to narrow down. And uh, yeah, that driver's seat module was bringing down like four, four modules. Uh, so mm. once we got it, we got it offline and I jumped it with a resistor. Uh, everything was hunky dory, but it was, uh, yeah, it was one of those that I was telling Mark, I was like, man, dude, <laughs> I was like, wait till these become normal. It's going to be real, right. real serious then. Yeah. That, that's why I can't see moving on from Diag as a part of my business. You know, some people, so like, yeah, I'm going full ADOS from full programming or whatever. And 
I mean, I, I, diagnostics is one of those things where I just don't see it being replaced with anything remote or simple or a big box company or anything like that. Like it's, it's always no. going to be a need. And I think even more so going into the future. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Like just how you started the conversation with the Subaru, you're having issues uh, calibrating it. Um, like things out of your control programming people putting in use modules or modules with one number of difference or like not knowing you can't put a use module in this, not knowing how to make that use module work is just as important as like diagnostics. Like that is the, what makes uh, mobile techs make it look easy, make it look smooth, mm -hmm. you know, but they've spent hours at home on the bench or hours with the car trying to, calibrate it and whatever right you know diagnostics is like it's like almost just the bare bones of it it's like yeah it, it it applies in every other aspect but it's like the car has this issue that it's not as like it's not as easy to comprehend as like it's just because if it's a windshield or it's just because you put a used module in. Right, right. It's like, no, there's a physical issue in the car. See, and that's <laughs> our, Go find it. That is our <laughs> diagnostics was our number one service that we sell. A hundred percent. I mean, it's. Which is wild. It's pretty bad. <laughs> like when you look at my like KPIs or you look at what, what we sell the most of, it is Diag. So, um. Is that by volume or by vo by dollar or both? both? Both. Okay. I mean, so we charge one eighty for the first hour of diag, and then we'll I matrix my stuff, so I have matrix labor times. Um, but I mean, we're at the point where, like, if a new shop calls us and they want diag, we just tell them, "Hey, look, it's one hundred eighty bucks for the first hour," uh, which I'm thinking about actually bumping that up. I'm thinking about going to two fifty, truthfully, um, just because of how much we do. Yeah, uh, and then I tell them like, "Look, guys," uh, and I tell them up front. I mean, most of them obviously they understand, they understand what a matrix is. So I tell them I was like, "Hey, man, after that, it's a matrix." So, I mean, you want two hours? You're roughly at, I think it's like four thirty-two. I don't know, fifty something, fifty-six. I can't remember. Um, so yeah, usually when I tell a shop, I'm like, "Hey, man, look, if you need a couple hours, you're X amount of dollars. So get pre-approval for six hundred bucks, then let us know." Mm hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean they do because obviously the car's broken. They can't figure it out. They got a customer right. that they have to impress, right? Or they need to take care of. So was... yep. Yeah, so, yeah got to pay to play. <laughs> yeah, pay to play in both sense, I guess. <laughs> yeah, us and that, tools that and is true. yeah. <laughs> what uh, uh is, is there? And if so, what is it, the decision-making process and buying uh, new tools for your guys' business? Oh, I was easy. just looking at one today. <laughs> <laughs> I, got a, I got a list for September that I'm going to buy. Yeah. If I need it, is... I buy it. <laughs> yeah, so pretty well. Okay. okay. Yeah, if you need it, you, you need it. Yep. Is there any, um, anything that stops you from buying a tool? The shop. Depends on the shop. Okay. I, I, okay. I do look at that. I'm like, eh, no, nah, I don't like you guys. I'm not going to buy this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go find someone else. <laughs> I have this damn uh, this, DME uh, for this Porsche, and this is for one of my buddies, right? <laughs> it has been whooping my ass, dude. Like, it is. It's a Continental SDI 6. So, okay. when you read the flash with Flex, well, first, Hexprog won't read this freaking thing. It says it does, but it won't. Um, you read the flash with Flex, and it scrambles the data. So the MCU is coming alive, obviously, and then there's, the data is getting mixed. I can literally read it once, read it again, and read it a third time and compare all three bins, and they're all different every time. Damn. Yeah, I'm like, God dang it. And they have, it has an external EEPROM, so I was like, all right, cool. I'm just going to swap the EEPROM, leave the flash back to the way it was originally, and uh, I should be good. No, because the immobilizer is also in the flash. <laughs> um, and obviously, I'm... I don't see many Porsches, so this is like my first one where I'm actually having to make a use module work in a Porsche. Okay. Uh, and it's been a struggle because, well, this is another one that, like, I need time to sit here and mess with it. And, you know, I mean, you know how bench work goes. 
I don't really yep. have to explain that to you. But <laughs> yeah. It's uh, one of those. It's just a pain, man. I hell, I even provided a module because they couldn't get one. So then I get I found one, got it. Um, and then I find out, oh, the customer doesn't have money right now. So I'm like, oh, man, well, <laughs> when he has money, you guys tell me. And then I'll make this a priority again. But until then, it's on the back burner. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, had, uh, I wanted. Oh, sorry, you go. Uh, I had a. Uh, uh, Hyundai recently with a used module that I went through that on. I think I was messaging you on that, Don, trying to figure out how to swap the VINs on that thing. And that was a, the that was a learning process for sure. And that's one of those things where there is a tool out there that'll do it. But I'm like, hmm, I don't know. I'm probably not going to see that many of these and I'm not in a mission state. So I'll just I'll do it the hard way. <laughs> I sent some pictures of that Ford uh to the group there you can see the the rodents damage you can just see that there's paw prints everywhere there's poop and there's taco <laughs> bell sauce wrappers that are chewing oh on. yeah yeah if you look you mean the, the rats had a reason to be the there fire sauce <laughs> yeah and then you can see the uh, C pillar there on the driver's side. The headliner is all stained. So I don't know if that's from urine or oh, water. Shit. I don't know, man. But that was my first red flag. When I saw that, I was like, hmm, that's sus. So I went to that to that C pillar and just, just did a visual, looked around at the bottom. And uh, I pulled the bottom part of it out and I saw a bunch of rodent poop. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. And I was like, yep, yep. There, this is this is going to be a big issue here. Yeah, those critters. They done. Did you check Splice Pack 7? I did check Splice Pack 7. Okay, just just I making sure. I was actually one of the first ones I checked. I was like, God, oh, please, There's, please uh, be dislodged, please. Yeah. <laughs> I got I to gotta explain something quick. Don and I run across, like, the same issues almost, like, once every couple weeks. Like, I'll be working on a BMW headlight, and he's working on a BMW headlight. <laughs> he has an issue with Splice Pack 7. I have an issue with Splice Pack 7. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what what's happening with it, but it, it makes it very convenient, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. To get through a car. Oh. Like, there's this uh, this one time uh, I had just finished it, I think, like, the day prior. He was at a body shop, and it was just a simple thing. Like, the passenger rear window doesn't work. I was like, I right, just go to the door module, reset memory, operate the switch from the door, and it'll work. And he's like, no. <laughs> he just completely refused it. <laughs> I didn't say anything. He's like, "Thanks." <laughs> oh, once I were actually one time I called him. I'm like, "Hey, what are you doing?" He's like, "Oh, I'm gonna diagnose this BMW. It was a headlight." And I was like, "No, oh, shit. yeah, no. I'm, I'm like, yeah, he's like, yeah, it's a three series." And I'm like, "Yeah," or he's like, "Yeah," and I was like, "Hmm," I was like, "Left or right?" He's like, "Left." Oh no, it was right. It was right. Mine was right. Yeah, and I was like, oh, really? I was like, mine's right, too. <laughs> this is like a 335, like I, 330, and mine was like a 328, or I forget whichever. I was like, hey, you die, I get, then tell me what the problem is. <laughs> so I did. Yeah, did. <laughs> I did. I got. I found my issue because I had a job to go to. I wasn't going to sit around and wait. And uh, I told him the problem, and that's where his problem was, too. <laughs> You guys, you guys have heard of like electron entanglement, right? So you have like two particles that are way far away from each other, but if one turns, the other one turns. Like you guys got something like that going on. Kind of, <laughs> kind of yeah. I like it. <laughs> if only, like, if only you had a caravan. If only I had an F three fifty. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, don't, don't say great. that. I might, I might, I might get a call for a caravan. Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow you get a call. <laughs> I swear to God. Caravan, we've replaced everything. It's running rich all the time. I swear to God, if I do, I'm flying to Canada. I'm going to hit you in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't need any more. Bring a sweater and a beat and, a, and your toque. Yeah, I'm going to need it for my That's ball. hot. <laughs> <laughs> you guys had to fire any shops? Mm hmm. No. What? Um. Not, not like, not. I haven't told the shop like, I'm sorry, I'm not working for you anymore. Just, I had a few shops I would call and just ask questions, and now it's just a DNA. Do not answer. Sure. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's like, eh, sorry guys. 
It's like the vibe, the feeling you get. It's like, I can't help you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Whatever I'm going to do is not going to help you. That's a good way to put it, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had, uh, I had to do that for a couple pieces recently. And one of them that I had worked with for a decent amount of time. But I don't know. It's It's almost like what I'm shooting for kind of outgrew what that shop's doing and they weren't willing to like you say i can't help them they're not willing to improve in any way shape or form and just uh didn't didn't align anymore i'm like and the guy got kind of pissy about it but i'm like sorry man like the stuff you're asking just does not work for me and what we're we're able to provide so just you know had to make the call it's kind of tough on that one like sometimes it's, like you say like i'll put a do not answer on some some numbers where i'm just like yeah i don't want to deal with these people but um like to actually making the decision to like, yeah, I'm just not going to do, you know, business. I don't, I don't do that often. It does, doesn't happen often, but it had to, I just like, yeah, this, this place and this guy, it just, I, I'm, I'm shooting for bigger and better things, I guess. Yeah. It, when it, it's a personal thing. Yeah. Like as much as business isn't personal, it's like, I want to go into this direction because I'm skilled and I value and respect myself. And it's just like this, it just doesn't align. Mm -hmm. Like you said, self-worth. You know? yeah, yeah. It's funny because I have the exact opposite too. Um, some of these shops, like you look at it from the outside and it's like, Oh my God, like this is a shop. But then when I go in, I'm like, <laughs> Hey guys, you need to do this, 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 and then call me and then I'll come back. Cause then, of course it's a car that has, it's a total turd bucket. It's got multiple problems. <laughs> Or I should say multiple components that are faulty that can all create the same issue. So mm. I'm like, look, guys, like, first off, we ain't, I'm not I'm not going to fight an uphill fight and waste hours of my time. You need to replace those things, then call me, and then I'll come back. And don't go dormant, you know, get an OEM or get this, get that. And then they do. They'll call me and be like, hey, we put all this stuff on. Uh, when can you come? <laughs> so then I show up, and it's literally like, okay – Poke, 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 check, check. Okay, here, boom. All right, here we go. Right here, bad connection. Whatever, voltage dropper. Kyle doesn't see a lot of this, but whatever, bad relay. <laughs> I, 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 see, I see bad relays all the freaking time down here. So, uh, corrosion is the thing up here. <laughs> you know, but it's uh, it's kind of crazy, man, because that there's some shops that I've got rid of that we fired. And you look at them, and they're they're nice shops. Like they're big shops. You would expect, like, hey, these guys are going to be yeah. professionals. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you're surprised by the, the the amount of money in the building doesn't necessarily yep. equate to the level of service they're they're providing. And I, for me, it's just like as you increase the volume of shops that you get to, you end up finding, oh, okay, there's X amount of shops that are really easy to work with, and yep. they know what they're doing, and everything works well. And then it's like, okay, I want more of those shops. Yes. <laughs> I want, I want yes. to keep those. And there's, there's other places where it's like, man, it's always a pain in my ass to go there and to deal with stuff there. I, yeah. I don't want those shops, you know? So yeah. I love, I love the shops that have the, they have the vehicles in the bay. They have the uh -huh. old parts there. They yes. leave everything mm. there. And it's a fresh battery. And I'm like, oh, yes, it's beautiful. Yeah. Like I'm, not, they I'm like, I'm having on the charger. Yeah. It's yeah. like that. Yep. That or like I'm not bringing. Like, uh, yeah, I walk in. I'm like, dude, it's got a brand new battery. The new parts are here. I was like, beautiful. I'm just gonna start it, let it run for a while, charge up the battery a little bit, and program it real quick and get out of here. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even putting a jump box. Let's go. Like, Come on. <laughs> Total hack way of doing it, but hey, we're not scared anymore. It's not a <laughs> yeah. Any GM ever except new ones. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send it we'll send it you don't know until you try right yeah, yeah. I think I set up once for a uh, blind spot programming I think it was on an Acadia oh, I was yeah. like oh cool it's gonna be like like the cruise like no big deal yeah. boom boom <laughs> boom no it took 45 minutes <laughs> oh shit really I was like I was like what the heck man <laughs> it was like I had I made the mistake. I scheduled it like a half hour block. Yeah. Cause I knew it's a GM. It's like, okay, I, there's my saving grace. Like there's my little break for the day, something easy. And then now it took time. I was like, ah, push my schedule all around. 
That's what you get. That's the way that always works. Is it like, uh, yeah, this one will be quick. I don't even say that anymore. <laughs> I don't even let those words no. come out of my mouth because it always makes it not quick. It's the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, speaking of programming, um, we had a good one on Friday. So it was a 17 Pathfinder. I sent Mark out to it and uh, they put a T they put a trans in it. So of course, you know, you gotta do the all the work procedures and then update the calibration to you know for warranty compliance. So he goes through the process, does everything, goes to do the the update, and um, you know, Nissan will launch the uh, the authentication page for you to mm-hmm. sign in. Okay, well, he had his Wi-Fi off, so he uh, obviously consult prompted him a message. You know, do you want to go offline mode, retry, or manually connect to a network? So he turns his Wi-Fi on, and then he just hit offline mode. Uh, I think obviously it was just a mix up there. I think he meant to click retry, and he hit offline. Well, then it took him back, obviously, to the home page, and the TCM was a no comp. Mm. So he's trying to go back in through reprogramming and configuration. And uh, let me actually backtrack real quick. Sorry. Uh, so when that prompt comes up, for the ones that don't know, your listeners that don't know, when that prompt comes up, it's usually after the file gets loaded into the VI, right? So after the 90%, it gets 100, and then it prompts you the the, the authorization uh, yeah. login. Um, so that happened, and then he hit home. So then he went back under reprogramming and configuration, goes into transmission, can't talk to it. So mm. he's like, what the hell? So then he goes back to the homepage, but he can see the VI. So he obviously goes under transmission, single system, tries to go in it, can't talk to it. So he calls me. I team view in and uh, I'm looking at it. I'm like, holy shit. I was like, it's gone. Like it's, it's, it's a no com. And yep, people are flagging to you, 01101. Lost okay. com with lost com with the TCM, so I I'm asking him I'm like hey is there another Pathfinder around another CVT there, uh, and there wasn't because I was gonna tell him hey go steal that go steal that TCM and see if we can we'll hot swap it and yeah. uh, you know I'll, I'll edit the CSV I'll edit the CSV to see if I can you know just put all the zeros and see if it'll go and uh, no no luck so I'm like all right man hey I was like I don't understand how this happened like I I couldn't understand why, you know, that module was offline. Cause uh, I'm like, man, it never erased, never erased logic block. It never did any of that in the normal yeah. sequence. So I'm like, man, this is very weird. So anyways, he leaves. I go back later that day and uh, yeah, the bus went to sleep. Obviously I key it on and I see a Prindle and I'm like, hmm, okay. Scan it. Sure shit. It's there. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know in that process when, it waits for authentication of it just takes the module and makes it go offline. I guess it gets ready for programming. Mm. I don't know. Okay. Um, but I figured yeah. I'd share that. Maybe somebody will run into that and they'll panic. <laughs> just don't panic. Sure. <laughs> Let the yeah. bus go to sleep. It'll come back. <laughs> right, right. As long as, oh, as long as sleep cycles, as long as the, the second loading bar there on when you're flashing with consult, as long as that second bar doesn't move, you're okay. Okay. So. Yeah, it's it's on my list of things to try before I call something is let's do a uh, capacitive discharge. I mean, you got to be careful. Like you don't want to shut the key off, uh, depending on the situation, right away. Maybe yeah. let's try a few things, but all else fails. Like yeah, let's let's try the cap discharge and see what happens. <laughs> Sometimes that's safe. even like bus sleep cycles. They're they work wonders, but it's like especially newer vehicles. Euro and, and a few Chrysler like, uh, stuff, domestic goofy, yeah, goofy, 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 just problems goofy stuff. On that. Yeah, you're like, you're like, hold up, I'm not. This is does not disturb me. This does not bother me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shut the key off after you're done. Just like you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like when when that all happened or what have you. Of course, I hop on hop on the net, start looking for a TCM because I'm like, all right, well, we're gonna get one. We'll flash it. We'll get it back in the car. And my biggest thing wasn't. It's not the money and it's not the module. It's obviously the inconvenience to our customer. It's like, hey guys, look, I, I apologize. Like we don't know what happened. Of course, we just I just took blame for it. I just like, hey, look, it was our computer. Our computer crashed. Uh, yeah, you know, 
I apologize. This was just something that out of our control, you know, we're going to go ahead. We'll make things right. We'll get a module, we'll get everything squared away. And uh, I'm just, I just need you guys to get time from your customer, obviously, because I got to source the module and, you know, it may take a couple days. Uh, and shop was totally understanding. They're like, yeah, no, it's cool. No biggie. You know, uh, just keep us in the loop. And they, they were going to look for a TCM also. Cause I told them, I said, Hey guys, if you guys can find one sooner, great. Just go ahead and get it. And then, uh, you know, we'll work out the, the monies after at the end when it's all said and done. You know, if I got to write you guys a check or whatever the case may be. Um, but yeah, no, we, had, we were able to, to get that going. So very, very, uh, I thought it was very weird. I'd never had experienced that before on a Nissan. So. Yep. Yeah, that's, uh, that's goofy. Um, I, uh, I've had a lot of those, like I say, the Chrysler stuff where it's after programming event or after doing something to the modules as far as a reset or whatever. And then like something won't talk or some function won't work or some weird codes are there. And then, yeah, you do either cap discharge or key off and then everybody's happy. We're all good to go. Um, I've wasted some time, tr you know, tracking some stuff down <laughs> that all I needed to do was that key off for a certain period of time and then it was fine. So I don't know what's, what the deal is or how stuff gets screwed up between communication and networks and things like that, but it can be really weird issues. I wonder if the key off programming, like newer GM stuff. Mm. I wonder if that's maybe part of it. I don't know. Obviously not, but I haven't actually done one of those yet. It's a bit weird. I won't lie. Everything's black and everything's off. And you're like, it's programming. <laughs> <laughs> it? It's working. Yeah. I think there's, there's been a, like a, for ADAS calibrations, the new, new stuff. You need to program the module to unlock it to do the calibration. I, I think that's just part of their serial data configuration. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a gateway. It's kind of odd. Okay. Yeah, it's going in a new direction, it seems. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Global B now. I, I haven't seen anything with that yet, but that's their new architecture. <laughs> yeah, I had a, a rear-wheel drive Nissan Frontier uh, TCM. Uh, same, same other guy that the other shop uses, well, this other Amco, they use him too sometimes when I'm not available. Well, he went out there, tried to program it, blank unit. Well, he bricked it. It was a no-com. So I show up. This happened on Saturday. I showed up Monday mid-morning. So it's had plenty of time to sleep. I get there, no Prindle, scan it, it's offline, like it's dead. So um, I go tell the shop, and the shop was pissed because the guy didn't tell him anything. The guy just said, oh, yeah, I can't program it. It's, ki it's kicking me out. And he left. He didn't tell him. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't tell him it was a no com. <laughs> so when I get there, when I get there, I'm like, guys, like this thing's a no com, like it's dead. So they were mad, right? Obviously, yeah. Because that's a twelve hundred dollar freaking module, brand new. So I'm getting ready to leave, and I go, I'm about to get in the van, and I was like, wait. I walk back inside. I was like, hey, you guys have the old one? They're like, yeah, we do. So I get it, uh, and it communicates, and they're replacing it for whatever speed code or I don't know what the hell they were replacing it for but uh, I go into reprogramming and there's a fucking reprogramming there's an update available uh, actually no it wasn't available I had to go and I added the CSV file to make it flash the same thing over again okay uh, so at the authentication page I stopped I had it plugged in obviously the, the original and then I unplugged it plugged in the one that was installed in the trans and then we fucking forced it through and yeah it came back to life and of course, nice. shop was super freaking happy, and of course, I got to charge a premium on that one because, well, <laughs> yeah. What else I are mean, they gonna do? Yeah, I mean, you can put a twelve hundred dollar module in it plus labor and all that. Yeah, it's good when you can be the hero. Yeah, yeah few, few and far between, right. per se. Right. Well, cool guys. This was fun. We'll uh, 
Let's do this another six months. Just keep it going. <laughs> number four. Fast and Furious 4. Yeah, number four. I'd, I'll have to look up and see what happens in four, but we can reference something. Fast 4. We'll get our... Uh, We'll get somebody to make up the the movie page <laughs> the with thumbnail? their faces on it. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get you in an eclipse oh. spider drifting through uh, Tokyo. Oh, there's there's Han. <laughs> D- DK, you see the 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 Han? Oh yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> Gino. But, yeah, you gotta be you gotta be Vin Diesel's character, or Don. Like, Okay. Well, yeah, it's because you're bald. Sorry, but <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know. <laughs> Surprise! Well, all right, boys. Pleasure well, talking to you. Yeah. All right, that's gonna do it for today's episode. Thank you, Kyle and Don, for joining me on the show. Really appreciate that. Also, like to thank everybody out there for listening to the show, all the feedback I've gotten, and the people have reached out wanting to be on the show. And so, hey, if that's you, you're in this industry, you're a passionate person about what you do, you've got something interesting to say or share, uh, shoot me a message either on Facebook or my email, which you'll find in the show notes, and we'll see what we can do to get you on the show. With that all out of the way, let's get out there and start fixing the world one car at a time.